Hey guys, I'm Avesh. This is the ninth video of .NET MA UI with Sync Fusion Control Series. Let's quickly review our previous session before we get started. In the last session, we focused on list view control of Sync Fusion, which helps create interactive and feature list views in mobile applications. We learned how to use drag and drop, which reorders items using the drag indicator view. Additionally, we changed the grid layout to a linear style with a predetermined number of columns. We learned how to use swiping, another fantastic feature of list view that associates actions from left to right or right to left and performs swipe actions. Please review the prior sessions before proceeding. In this session, we will focus on horizontal list view for customizing the items by subcategories. We will also focus on navigating to different content pages based on category selection to show either the subcategory or caught pages. In the next and final session of the list view, we will cover sorting, filtering, and grouping of list view along with the MVVM segregation of code. Let's get started with the coding session. In the previous sessions, we have created a main category list for our e-commerce application. Now the next requirement is to navigate to subcategories from the main category. Let's create a subcategory page and navigate from the main category page. In our scenario, we have mobiles, fashion, books, electronics, furnitures, and other main categories. Let's assume that we need to navigate to a mobile subcategory page where a consumer can choose either an iPhone or a Samsung phone to proceed with this purchase. Let's first create a subcategory page and then navigate the same from the main category. In this process, let's make the subcategory page as a horizontal list view for ease of user access. Let's now get going. Let's create a product subcategory content page. Right click on this project that we have been using from first session and add .NET MAUI content page XAML. So let me name it as product subcategory horizontal. You don't need to mention it as horizontal, but to make it easy, I'm just naming it as product subcategory horizontal dot XAML. Let me add this here. Notice that it has added the product subcategory horizontal XAML file and the respective C-sharp file. Now let me switch to the C-sharp file and add the subcategory repository here. Let me create the item info similar to what we have created in the first session. So let's say class item info and let's add the properties of name, description, and let's add property category image. Let's now create a, another class, which is list category of subcategory information. So let me make it as public class list category subcategory info. Both category and subcategory will have the same name, description, and category image, but each category level, we have subcategories which are of item info. So let me represent this as property. I will say item info is nothing but our category. And then under each category, we will have list of subcategories. How do we represent them? Let me create list of item info and call it as, it prompts for items, but let me rename it as subcategories here. So I'll call it as subcategories. Both categories and subcategories share the item info because both of them will have the same name, description, and image. So let me leave it like this. Now the next step is to create a category map repository. So let me create a class called category map repository. And let's create a constructor here, which is category map repository. And we'll create an internal observable collection, which returns us the category map. Now let's initialize variable list of items equal to new observable collection, which returns us the observable collection, which is nothing but our list category subcategory info that we have created earlier. And let me return list items. That's it, pretty simple. Now let's, you know, in a real world scenario, we call the API, we will get the data, and then we return the data of the items. We map it to the item info and to the item list info or the subcategory info, and we return it back. But right now, since we are not integrating with any of the API, let me create some static list of items or mock items over here, uh, which are nothing but our list data items. Let me start with the list data items now. Let me create a list data items class and add those objects there. So let me start off with list data items equal to new. Let's, let's assume that we have two subcategories for the mobiles, which is one is a Samsung and the other one is iPhones. 
let me call it as new name iPhones. Let me now add the description and image over here for both Samsung and iPhone. So let's say buy all Samsung phones at cheaper prices and let me add buy all iPhones at cheaper prices. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image as well. So to make it faster I'm copying it from my other window. Now look at that I have imagekit.io. Remember in the previous sessions I have been using the imagekit library which is our CDN and I'm uploading all the images that are required that we consume in the application to reduce the size of the application. So I have pre-uploaded them to make the things faster. So please do the same when you are also practicing this application. Now let me switch back again and let me add subcategories here. Now what would be the subcategories for Samsung? It could be different phones or the mobiles that are available by Samsung company that are being sold on the online platform. So let's say we have A14, MO4, M14, S23 5G, S23 Ultra 5G are the subcategories for Samsung. So let me add those subcategories over here. To make it faster, let me copy the subcategories from my other window to save some time. So we have all of these subcategories here and let me also add the subcategories for the iPhone as well which is enter and add those subcategories. Now we have all the subcategories related to Samsung and iPhone over here. Now once this is done we have to map these categories and subcategories into our observable collection and return it back. So we have already done this exercise in the previous sessions. So I'm going to add that code over here that we have already returned earlier without wasting some time. So let me collapse this list data items and before returning the list, let's map all of these list data items into a list category and subcategory info and return it back. That's it. We are done with the repository now. Now let's create the layout view model that will be used in the list. How do we do that? Similar to the product category that we have already implemented in the earlier session, we will create a layout view model which generates the data source and returns the enumerable and observable collection. Let me create a layout view model class over here, create the constructor of this and then let's create a property which is our observable collection which will be binded in the XAML. So we will call it as list category subcategory info and let me call this property as list category map details and then we'll create a method which generates the data source which will be a private method. So let's say generate source. Now in this method we'll declare the object which is category map repository and we call it as repository equal to new category map repository and then list category map details equal to repository dot get category map. That's it. And let's call this generate source over here within the constructor. We are done with the repository. We are done creating the item info and we are done creating the layout view model. Now the next step is to switch to the XAML and start consuming these layout view model and the list category details. Let me switch to the XAML and start coding over there. Let's first add the list view namespace over here after this namespace declaration and then let me add the xmns local which points to the namespace as well. Then once it is done let me remove this vertical stack layout and instead we will create the content pages binding context which we have been doing in our earlier session. Now this binding context will point to the layout view model. Now once this is done let's create a content page and create the scroll view and the grid layout definitions. I'm doing it pretty fast because we have already done this feat in the last sessions. So let me create this and close this grid and scroll view over here to keep it ready. Let me also close this content page over here. Let's create a list view to bind items. Before that, I want you to take note of something in the list data items. The list data items are made up of collection of Samsung and iPhone categories as well as the subcategories. But which means in the real world we will design a list view that iterates the categories first and then the subcategories. To link the category and subcategories we need to create a parent and child list views. Let's create a parent list view here. To make it faster, let me copy it from my other window. Let me explain you this. I have created a list view, binding it to list category map details and we have created an item template here which has got a data template and within the data template, I'm just creating a label over here which shows the main category name. The next step is to bind the subcategories within this list views item template. 
Our requirement is to display the subcategories in horizontal layout format. To achieve that, we need to use a stack layout and embed the list view in a horizontal orientation. Let me quickly achieve that. After this label, let's create a stack layout and within the stack layout, let me call the grid dot row is zero row, and I'll put some padding here which I have tested out earlier and then I'll make the orientation as vertical. Don't get confused over here and then I'll create a list view with the orientation as horizontal. Now look at that. We have another list view which is the child list view and is pointing to the subcategories. I've also defined other things such as orientation horizontal item size is 200 height request as 350 so let me close this list view and then start creating the item templates under this list view so let's go ahead and create the item template which will hold the data template and the frame and within that let me add this data template over here within the item template and close the item template over here now let me try to explain this to you guys so within this item template, I have a data template again and I've created a frame similar to the product categories in the earlier session and I have also added an image which will bind to the subcategory image or the category image and then we have the stack layout and the labels which is binded to the name of the subcategory. That's all it is. Now if you look at this XAML file, we have the parent list view and we have the child list view which is binding to the subcategories. The next step is to add navigation from category to this subcategory page. Let's add a gesture to the product category XAML file that we have created in our earlier session. We need to create a tabbed event listener and bind it to the tab gesture. How do we do that? Let me open the product category.xaml and within here under this grid definitions we need to create grid dot gesture recognizers and we'll say tab gesture recognizer for the tap command over here. I'm doing a binding command to the tap command. Now I will switch back to the product category dot XAML here and similar to the way we have added a delete and archive command, we will add the tap command here. So how do we do that? We'll create an asynchronous tap command for the given object and we'll create a navigation parameter to navigate to the subcategory page using our shell commands. We will do it as await shell dot current dot go to async and to that route that we have created in the app shell XAML file which is product subcategory horizontal which is a file that we have created and we will pass in the navigation parameter. The navigation parameter defines the tabbed item that we have selected to transfer from the category to the subcategory. Now let me save this and run this application. The application is now up and running. Let me tap on the mobiles category. Notice that on tapping the mobiles, it navigates to the subcategory page with both Samsung and iPhone as listed categories and under that, the subcategory items are presented in horizontal layout format. With this, we have successfully displayed the list view items with horizontal orientation using navigation. In the next session, we will focus on sorting, filtering, grouping, and we'll also segregate the code by MVVM pattern. Till then, thank you for listening and have a great day.